Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy. I'm here today with Tim Denton. Just so you know, and I'm going to hand it off to Tim right now. Big Tim, he's amazing. Listen, guys, Tim is phenomenal. Being dead broke, getting crushed in the restaurant business, given all he had, he started the automotive sales industry. He got a job at a car dealership. All that any man or woman could ever ask for is an opportunity. I tell you guys every day the opportunity you have. Listen to Tim's story. You are going to trip. This can be you. It could be you today. Tim, thank you so much for being with me. And I'm going to hand it over to you, brother. All right, y'all. Um, my name is Tim Denton. I live in uh, Warner Robins, Georgia, which is south of Atlanta. And Andy is right. I mean, a, a quick backdrop of my story. I did drop out of high school, and Andy does talk about that a lot as well. Um, I did drop out of high school in ninth grade, and somewhere down the line, I got my GED. Um, after that, I got into the restaurant business for 20 years. Very, very hard business. Um, in 2008, I purchased two restaurants with everything I had. I was probably too young, but I did it. And then um, by 2013, I was bankrupt. Well, I didn't ba file bankruptcy, but we basically went out of business. Um, so in 2013, I was dead broke with $300,000 in debt. Um, I had a friend who was in the car business said, hey, man, you can make a lot of money in the car business. I used to also, when I was at the restaurant, would see young kids come in, 19, wearing Rolexes, driving nice cars, making 150000 a year. And it just, it piqued my curiosity. I'm an extremely hard worker and good at what I do. So I figured, let me try something where I can get paid for my performance. So one day I walked into a Ford dealer. I did pick Ford. Ford didn't pick me. I'm a Ford guy. Um, they're all good brands, but I sell Fords. Anyways, I walked into the uh, dealership one day, filled out the application. Of course, they're going to call me back. I never heard back. So I made another call. Um, they said, well, come back in. I came in and I sat over there on the uh, over the chairs for a good three hours. And I just sat there, sat there, and I was going to leave. But something inside said, man, just stay. So finally, what I had to do, I had to get a piece of paper. And on the piece of paper, I wrote, I could sell Tiger Woods, Sergio Garcia's used car. Now, a little backdrop, Sergio Garcia, Tiger Woods, they hate each other. So anyways, I wrote that on there. I walked up, handed it to the manager, and then he said, you know what? You're hired. So, um, Hey, that's the damn car business right there. <laughs> I had to. I was, dude, I no, sat there for like five hours. Nobody wanted to help me. I mean, I was like, dude. So finally, dude, bam. So, anyways, it. so it worked right. out. Um, so after that, you know, they put me in a room, of course, and it's Grant Cardone. I love Grant. But they put me in a room with a bunch of CDs and said, listen to this for a week, for two weeks. So finally, after three days, I walked outside, walked up to my manager and I said, what's it going to take me to get you to let me sell somebody a car today? So they said, hey, man, if you go out there today and sell a car, you're fine. So basically, long story short, I sold a car. But the moral of all of this is, was what it took to get to where I'm at now. All right, now my first year, and I'm not going to get into income too much, but my first year, I did make $150,000. And that was slap raw. I mean, I just had the talent, didn't know anything, didn't know how to close, didn't know how to demo a car, didn't know how to do anything. Brutal work ethic. Just just complete work. And I actually was in a, a magazine where they did a little article. They called it Nine Months of Hell. I stood out there on that lot for a year straight. I got here at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I stayed till 10 o'clock at night. I never came off the lot. It was 110 degrees. Guys would bring me bottles of water, say, dude, just drink. I remember it because Georgia doesn't snow much. I remember one day it was snowing. I was outside. My manager was like, dude, come inside. I was like, no. I told myself, well, one year straight, I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to train like crazy so I never have to go out on that lot again. So that's what I did. So what I started doing was I started researching trainers, Grant Cardone, everybody. And I stumbled into Andy. So kind of, me and Andy have kind of grown together in the last eight years. So I stumbled into Andy. And what I've done with Andy in training is I've trained nonstop. So the next year, my income went up about 50 grand. And then, you know, it went up another 100 grand after that. And then last year, I had an amazing year. Everything on mine was from training. I tell all the new guys, now I'm going to be honest, I don't try to help a lot of the new guys at first because they come and go so quick. And a lot of them are serious about it. But once I find somebody who's serious, like I got a young kid that sits next to me now, he is serious and he's got potential. So I'm training him. The biggest thing I tell everybody on the planet is training. Guys, y'all got to train. I look at it like this. If, if it's a professional athlete, Michael Jordan trained nonstop. You didn't see what he did before the game or after the game. You saw what he just that little bit of performance. Training it to me in the car business is just like a professional athlete. I have to train nonstop that my craft will become amazing. The more I train, the more money I started to make, the more happier my customers were. So what I did was I come in every single morning, and I still do it, 
and I train for a good hour and a half, two hours, role playing with myself, reading books. And then after that, I listen to Andy all day long. So when I have a customer, I put it on mute. When my customer leaves, bam, I'm listening to Andy. Um, the other thing with training is kind of like bathing. If you don't do it every day, you start to stink. I've heard Andy say this in the past as well. I swear to gosh, man, if I don't train for like one day, I am so rusty the next day. I rarely take time off, but I took maybe a half a day off around Christmas time. I came back after Christmas. I was horrible. So you got to train nonstop. The other thing with training is, guys, I'm telling you, you can make all the money you want in this business. I have literally a ninth grade education. I passed some GED tests when I was 21 or something, but literally I got a ninth grade education. I could retire right now debt free. I'm debt free. I own four houses. Now, remember now, seven years ago, I was $300,000 in debt. I'm at the point now where I can physically retire and never have to work again. I've got enough investments making me money where I wouldn't have to work. Now, I'm still not where I want to be, but I know I'm going to get there. And guys, how did I get there? By training nonstop, listening to what this guy is saying. You've got to take this so serious. It, I don't understand I've been in the business nine years, okay? And there's a lot of guys that still work here. And there's some guys in my dealership been here 30 years that are still standing at that glass staring out the door. I, I just don't get it. I've been in the business 30 years. Why am I waiting on an up? So what they'll do is they stand at the door. They wait on ups. They complain about the dealership ain't giving them leads. The dealership isn't, don't have enough business coming through. The dealership this, the dealership that. But what are you doing? You're talking football. Y'all are hanging out. You're watching Facebook. You're standing at the glass or you're standing outside. There's 14 of y'all hoping on that one up. And then when you do get that one up, you don't even know how to work them. You don't know how to work them. So you put them on the wrong car. You get to the desk. And the next thing you know, when they give you that one objection, the price is too high, what are you going to do? Oh, I got to get my manager. And like Andy says, as soon as you get that manager over there, your, your, your gross went down. Instead, what I, I decided to do instead of standing at that glass was to train, was to train. Now, the next thing, y'all, the money part making is um, Facebook. Andy preaches this all the time. Um, Facebook and Craigslist were big to me. I don't use Marketplace and Craigslist as much anymore, but I'm not saying it's not great. I just don't need it. I have a large enough of my own following now. But Facebook itself is huge. Every customer I've ever sold, I friend them. They become part of my family. And the last thing is staying in touch with my customers. Why is this so huge? It is so freaking huge. One, you get more gross. It's easier to close them. They like working with you. They already know you, but you got to keep your name fresh in their mind. So a couple of things that I do massively with my customers is letter writing. I've got tons of letter writings over here. Letter writing is a lost breed. When you buy a car from me, I'm sending you a thank you post call with my picture, my name on it. I actually send two. Then when it's your birthday, I'm sending you a card. Christmas, I'm sending you a card. Thanksgiving, I'm sending you a card. And then three other times throughout the month or the year, I'm sending another card. So I literally send you 10 letters a year. Now, sometimes people call me and tell me to stop, but that's fine. Also, what I do is, um, of course, I'm going to call them and check up on them, text them. I also got a little sticker. This is old school. I got a sticker with my name and my phone number that goes in the gas cap. The other thing with my customers on repeat customers is I like complaints. I like them. I like problems with my customers. You know what? Most salespeople don't. That's why we're one percenters. We want these. You know why? Because they continue to call me. It keeps my name fresh in their minds. So say I sell an 800 beacon and I lose a grand on the deal and nothing goes wrong. I'm never going to see this guy again. But say that same guy, he has a problem with the tire or he didn't get his tag or his paperwork's not correct or something. He's got to keep calling me, calling me. I'm resolving the problem. So I also tell my customers any service issues, let me get them. 99% of guys after they sell a car don't want anything to do with the customer and definitely don't want to complain. I call them, you got two different type of people, man. You got people like me and then you got people that are just order takers. They take your order and they never want anything to do with you again. I want you in my life. I call it a pipeline. If I take care of that one customer, it tree lines out so I'm many referrals. So y'all to finish up, I mean, again, Number one, Andy's the best there is on the planet. I've, I've searched them all. He's amazing. Everybody I can put on him, I do. So basically, training is by far number one. Number two is staying in touch with your sold customers. And then number three is Facebook. Facebook is massively huge. Guys, if you train nonstop, you can go, for, like me, $300,000 in debt seven years ago, 
to the point now I don't have to work again ever in my life. And that's just in seven years, seven years. I don't have to work again in my life. I am secure for the rest of my life. And I had a ninth grade education. Guys, y'all can do it. <laughs> Damn. Damn, bro. God, man. You know what, Tim? I got into training for you. For every person out there that you're talking to, every single person. Tim, how many times have you texted me? How many times have you watched video? How many times have uh-huh. I you comment on a YouTube video? I always see. Guys, I see Tim all the time. I always say this, even though I'm not there with you in body, I'm there with you in spirit, right? Like you're, we're always linked up. The second I talk to Tim on the phone, it's like, get bam, bam. It's like, we're hitting each other. You know what I'm we're saying? We're super similar, man. We're, we're, we're 100%. Now you are, you've got the gift of talk beyond anybody. Now, like you said, it's, it's, you can learn it. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm not a people. No, you person. learn it. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a people person at all. I don't go out. I don't party. I don't hang out. I don't have a lot of friends. I, I like to be in my house. I'm not a people person. But besides that, like you said, salespeople are learned. You're not born a salesperson. I wasn't born a salesperson. I learned it by training. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, guys. Listen, I just want to say, number one, everybody that's watching this, um, Tim, thank you for your time. Obviously, no it's a Sunday. It is a Sunday. Tim's dealership is closed. He has a key. Yeah, we're closed. I don't know if you can see behind me. There's a uh, yes. Tim is in his dealer in this place. <laughs> He's a salesman with the key to everything in the building. Building. And guess what? You know why? Because he's at work, and I don't know what he's doing, but I talked to him, and I said, hey, what day can we get together? I want your story to be shared with others around the world. And, Tim, we get thousands of testimonies. It's just I, I love your deal because honestly, I, I see a lot of people, you know, we have a lot of younger guys that follow us, right? And there's guys in their 20s and 30s. How old are you, Tim? Are you 44? Is that what you said? I'm 45. I, I mean, I didn't get into business until I was, what, 37? Beautiful. Okay. Well, I have a lot of guys that are younger, right? And, and they follow us. And, and yeah. you know, and I, I'll, I'll shoot a video with a 20-year-old. guy's like, man, I'm not 20, you know? I can't do that. Dude, Tim got in when he was 37. He's 45 and he can retire today. And yeah. that's the deal. And by the way, Tim, how do you feel about these next couple of years in the car business? How much money it sells me to make if he's got his mind right and training hard? All the money, man. Y'all can make all the money. I'm telling you, you can make more money than doctors and lawyers. I mean, Ooh. you're going to make more money than most doctors. And of course, a specialist might make a little bit more unless you start hitting the, the 700000 a million dollars like Andy and, and Ali and Frank and a few of the mothers out there. But you still can make way more than doctors and lawyers, I'm telling you, with a ninth grade education. Damn, I love it, man. Um, well, number one, hey, just congratulations on all your success. Obviously, no you've earned it. You've Thank earned you. it. You, you, number one, you have to want it. And then if you want it, you have to train. And if you do those things and you stay consistent, the magic starts to happen. Exactly. Your life starts to change. And and then you change. And you know, next and find you know, a, find, and find a good dealership. And I've, I've heard Andy say this in the past as well. Sometimes you got to leave your dealership. And I know just like Andy preaches, you don't want to hop around. But once you find that one good dealership, stay. Stay. Don't move. I, I, Tim, got to stay. And listen, I always say that. We don't want anybody to leave any store. No. We, we want you to stay. But what we're saying is if you live in a toxic, cancerous society, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't complain about it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know the reason why we don't complain is because nobody cares. And secondly, you got to just get the hell up and go somewhere and take action. You got to play offense 24-7. Um, you know, you, I, I want to say this. Um, does anyone else in your store – do you compete with them or do you stay in your own lane? I'm in my lane. You're in your own lane. I don't, think I, compete with any, I don't think I compete with anybody in the state. I, I just kind of stay in my own lane. Now, you know, I used to do huge, huge unit number wise. Just got uh-huh. too old for that. I have no assistance. So before um, the coronavirus, about three years before that, I did 50 to 60 units a month. Um, I don't want any part of that anymore with no assistant. <laughs> I do, but see, now the thing is I do 35 to 45 units a month, but make more money than when I was making 60 units a month. Exactly. But you, but you found that out along the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I always, say, I always say this to everybody. Look, I averaged 70 cars a month when I sold. Here's right. the craziest thing. You can't deposit units in the bank. No. <laughs> you can't pull up to the bank teller and say, hey, I want to deposit 70 units. She's like, show me your check. And the cool thing is, as a, and I'll, I will end it here, but when I ran a dealership, Tim, you know, we averaged, it was 150 car score. We took it to average in four, 450. That was our average for five-year straight. 
and a record with the 606 book. Here's the crazy thing. After rollbacks, the 606, we made more money on the 450 than we did on the 606. Yeah, yeah. The, the time I hit that 606, I said, we ain't never doing this again. All right, I'm with we you. We never do it. We're going back to 450 at the right growth and doing it the right way. And I, I had to learn that lesson that I didn't want to be a 600 car store. I wanted to be a 450 store. And that's what you, you said. Hey, I, I did 50, 60, but I learned 35 is my sweet spot slowing down and hit the right. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, taking care of your repeat referral, training hard, raising your grows. You know, anyways, there's two ways to sell more car, or make more money. Sell more cars or raise your grows. And you have to find that right balance in your store. And um, I think that that's what you're saying. You know, in your right. store, like right now in the beginning, you got to attack, yeah. go all in. But gross per copy sure changes the old paycheck. And, and by the way, we have never said how much you make, but you're doing phenomenal. I can't Appreciate wait to see how you finish 2021. I already know what your record is. I know you're going to hit it. Um, anything you need from me, let me know. And look, I'm, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to slow down the end of next year. And I'm gonna drive out there and see. I promise you. I owe you, man. I really do. I owe you big time, man. I, I really do. And I feel like you're my brother. And I owe you big I'm your time. Brother. Thank you for everything you do, brother. And for everybody that's watching this, you notice this. Me and Tim have not personally met in person, but we're brothers. And all of us are. The people you see commenting on YouTube, you know the people that have stayed in the game with us, right? Yep. I mean, you see them. I I, I always see. And and so if you look on any every, if you go watch the 500 videos on YouTube, right, you'll see Tim. He's there. He's there on every one of them. Every morning I wake up, I see Tim saying, oh, yeah, I, I like this one. Watch it. 19th time I watch this one. Hey, ooh, I, I don't know how I missed that one. Or hire that kid. Or <laughs> yeah, he's always there, man. And, and I'm telling you when I say this, you know, you got, you got, you got paid training. You got free training. You, you just got to train. That's yes. what Tim's saying. You got to stay connected, com committed. And Tim's watched all the trainings in the world. You know, he's watched all the Cardones. He's watched all the Brian Stacey. He's watched all the Zig Ziglar's. He's watched it all, and he loves it all. But yep. In the Nick Down Automotive deal, 21st century training, this has leveled him up and has taken him, yes. you know, to where he's at today. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he trains on it every day, and I, and I love it. And, you know, anyways, I'm grateful for you, man. I love you, bro. I cannot wait to see you. Um, and then let's finish this year really strong. And uh, I pr appreciate you being an inspiration for everybody. And the comeback story that you have, it's beautiful, man. So ha have a great day, brother. Man, you, I love you. Have an amazing day. We'll, we'll talk to you soon, okay? Hi, y'all. Thank you.